Hello, my name's Mark and I am G-Code Tutor. Now, I've seen a lot of bad safety advice online recently in different groups that I'm a member of. So I thought I'd make this video just to explain some ways you need to make sure you're safe in the machine shop. So the first thing I want to talk about is gloves. Now, when I'm dealing with coolant, I suffer from dermatitis. So I always use gloves when dealing with oils, coolants, and fluids within the machine shop. Now, I use nitrile gloves and not latex gloves. Now, the reason for this is latex allergies can happen at any point during our lifetime. And the less exposure we have to latex, the better. And also, inside those latex gloves is often powder. Now, that powder dries out your skin and can make any skin conditions worse over time, especially if we're wearing them for many hours a day. So I always use nitrile gloves when dealing with coolants or fluids in the machine shop. Now, when we're dealing with sharp objects in the machine shop, such as we drop our spanner into the swarf bin or our Allen key and we need to put our hands in there and fish it out, or maybe we got some strong stringy swarf that's attached to our drill that we need to remove once the machine has stopped. Well, for that, I recommend rigger gloves. Now these are strong leather gloves, although they're not waterproof, they're ideal for stopping cuts from any sharp swarf. It's also great for when we're deburring our work to make sure we don't cut ourselves. Now we shouldn't wear gloves at all times in the machine shop. There is many situations where gloves are in fact more dangerous than wearing them, including when we're near any rotary parts of any machinery, such as on pillar drills or on manual machines like lathes. So we should always keep gloves off when we are working with machines. There is rotating parts that are in our area where we are working. So on CNC machines, we have that door locked and closed when any parts are rotating or moving. So it's safe there to wear gloves, especially if we're dealing with coolant or we're deburring our parts that are wet with coolant. But if we're working on a manual machine with rotating parts, I never ever wear gloves because even the thin nitrile or latex gloves can still drag your hand into the machine. They don't rip in time if any parts get caught. So never wear gloves when you're operating anything that is rotating. So the next thing I want to talk about is long hair. Some of you may have long hair like I used to here in this picture. So if you're working in a machine shop and you have long hair, please tie it back at all times in a ponytail to make sure it's not in the way. And if your hair is extra long and the ponytail still causes it to flop over your shoulder, for example, some companies recommend hair nets, although I find this is normally an overkill. I normally just tucked my ponytail in the back of my shirt and kept my head away from any rotating parts. So if you do have long hair, I've seen nasty videos of this when I was an apprentice and they demonstrated what can happen if your hair is over your face and you're near a rotary part such as a pillar drill. So please tie your hair back if you have long hair. Now quite often online I've read a lot about people recommending to remove your interlocks from machinery. Now this is a terrible idea. You can always operate any machine with these locks in place and you should always do so. I've even worked for companies that told me that I had to work and had to set up my machine with the door open and interlocks removed. Now this is terrible advice. If you're ever asked to do this, please don't. These locks are there to make sure that we don't have any accidents. As you'll see all over your machine, there's plenty of stickers saying please use the door interlocks at all times, and you should. Now some more bad advice I often see in different Facebook groups is that to use an air blow gun to cool yourself down in the summer or when you're hot. Now this is terrible advice. It only takes five PSI of pressure to inject an air bubble into your bloodstream, and that is fatal. It can go straight to your brain and you'll be dead before you realize it. So please never use airlines to put inside your shot socks, to cool down your feet, or even worse, inside your pants. It's a really bad idea to use an airline anywhere near your skin, and you should never do it. Now, while we're on the subject of blowguns, when you use them to remove swarf or coolant from inside a bore, for example, or any pocket, it can let off a very loud sound, a very high-pitched frequency sound, and those decibels can reach up to 130 decibels each. Now that's the same volume as an A380 on liftoff. That's extremely loud sounds and it's the frequencies can really damage you, not just your ears, but anyone around you. So if you're using airlines to clean the inside of bores or pockets, please be very aware of that high pitched frequency that can whistle out of those bores 
and not just hurt your hearing, it can damage people's hearing around you also. So if you're going to do this, make sure everyone has ear protection on and especially yourself. Now, talking about ear protection, there's different kinds of ear protection we can use in the machine shop and we don't need to wear them all the time. It depends on our situations. So we have the in the ear earbuds that acts like a small earbud goes in the ear and it takes away the high frequencies. So this is great for all day wear if you find the noise fatigue in the machine shop it's starting to give you headaches or make you feel tired and stressed through that noise pollution. But if you're machining, say for example, aluminum tubing and there's a high pitch frequency given off there, I would recommend over the ear protection, the full riveters headset. Now these block off all the sounds that will damage your ears. So these are much better when you need that extra protection for the extra loud noise. And again, make sure other people around you also have theirs on if you need to use them. So that's just a few basic health and safety tips that I've seen recently online that's been given away bad advice. So I just wanted to make sure that you're up to speed on some advice that's been said out there that might not be for the best. So if you want to know more on this subject, I'm currently building a course over on my website at gcodetutor.com that's going to explain more ways to stay safe in the machine shop. But until then, I have courses on G-Code programming, CAD CAM and machine shop maths to bring you up to speed on anything you may know when operating your machine.